You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. The After Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's Rookie Blue After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Rookie Blue After Show. They was rocking a little uh, BG stand alive at the intro for uh, Rookie Blue and Bingus were doing and we are doing Rookie Blue season four episode three titled Different Not Better. I'm your host Bam Erickson and I'd like to introduce my lovely uh, panel of co-hosts. Hi, I'm Anita Four. Hey guys, I'm Tiana Hobson. Hi everyone, I'm Marissa Serafini. All right, so we are back. Oh, you sorry, I'm sorry, I'm still dancing <laughs> over here. I love this song. Okay, sorry, focus. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're finally back, which seems like an eternity since we've been um, here, and this is only the third episode, so uh, we, have a, we have a really long ways to go, but it was good to uh, be back to do the recap for our Rookie Blue. And so let's get into the whodunits with the whole ATM um, mission. What did you guys think about that? I think it's interesting, it, and you know, just to have a fairly regular kind of blue collar um, situation going on, mm -hmm. but we still like, the, the way they went about it and how they found their uh, the question the people who might have been involved. I, I liked it. Mm -hmm. It was a, a nice regular change, I guess. Pull your pants down. <laughs> you want to see if you have a tattoo. <laughs> lesson, lesson of the day: Don't moon the camera if you mm -hmm. have a tattoo, because then the cops will find right. you. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're doing great until you moon the camera. <laughs> yeah. You're getting away with it. They didn't know who mm -hmm. you were, and then you moon the camera, and you ruined everything. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like he wants to get caught, but then I think when someone continues to to do illegal things. It catches up to you, and you get so comfortable getting away with things mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. eventually give yourself up. Yeah. So, I mean, he looked guilty <clears throat> when they went and questioned him. You know, he's like, "Oh, you can ask my, you know, barber," and then you see him like leave afterwards. Like, come on. What they got? Do that. What got it for me is when he was like, "Yeah, he just got back from the barber shop, and how he had just cut five inches off his hair." Like to me, he dug himself. He dug his lie too too much because. It's one thing to get a haircut. Hey, you know, you can you could have mm -hmm. gotten a haircut. But then five inches, like sometimes when people get so caught up in their lies and things, they kind of say something that is a dead giveaway. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the whole cut the five hair inches off, he was really trying to lay it in heavy to, to prove that he was really telling the truth, which he was lying. It was a little too much. <laughs> we could have just been like, I got a haircut, mm -hmm. and just yeah. leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes but then he's like, I got five inches, and it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. you. He was layering the lie too much, like mm -hmm. Bam was mm -hmm. saying, you know, and that kind of gave it away a little bit. I wish we had gotten. I I liked how we this episode was laid out, but I kind of wanted more of the who done it. Yeah. For it, because I kind of miss that. Like, I can't. Why was he robbing these places? Mm -hmm. These questions come into my mind. You know, mm -hmm. what was his motive behind it? Um, you know, did he just want money? Did he just see an easy way to do it? Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of arrested him, and then that was that. Yeah. And for me, the whodunits are not, I feel like the, the whodunits take a backstory, and I want more. Like, the other seasons prior, the whodunits were a lot more involved into the story, mm -hmm. but now it's taken such a, a, back, uh, a back seat. I also wish there was more. I agree. Yeah. They should have dug a little bit more into it. I, I, I agree, but I think that the I kind of, like, I'm not um, that against the fact that they kind of brushed that aside a little mm -hmm. bit because we do get to see more character developments <clears throat> between everyone else and, like, their personal stories, and I think that's the reason why people are so invested in the show because they get attached to the characters and mm -hmm. what's happening on with them rather than, like, every episode, you know, it's this singular... Um, See, and I, I, I totally feel the opposite. I felt like there was more 
involved. There was more with the characters in previous seasons than this one, like, you know, with Gail and her in the, in the prop, uh, not the prop room, but it's called um, Evidence Room. Mm. That's all. She was just working in the Evidence Room the whole entire episode. Like, that was, that sucked to me. Yeah, it was kind of like on, like, the boring side-ish. Yeah, I didn't, I, we're seeing what's going on with the characters, but, like, give me more. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still hearing about, okay, well, we'll go on to that. <laughs> so, now that we, so now that we've talked a little bit about the Dunnett, let's get into the big stuff. Let's talk about McNally and Carly. So they were partners. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Mm -hmm. We called, we called, somebody called yeah, that. Yeah, we knew that. Yeah. 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 It, it was it, it was a nice twist because they're two both female uh, alpha females and mm -hmm. when you throw them together sometimes you're gonna have uh, butting heads and I like the fact because they're so kind of alike but yet so different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and even we see Marlo she she acts on protocol and Andy acts on emotion and that even that like um, has c conflict within partnerships. I th I think that if the circumstances were different, they would be friends. If they didn't have a guy between them, I could see them being a great partnership mm -hmm. and really great friends too along those lines. So maybe that's a little more into predictions that I'm going to say. Hopefully it will evolve into that. I I agree 90% with you. Um I disagree just a little bit because there is something that McNally does that she always goes with her gut, mm -hmm. and sometimes her gut gets in the way of her being a good cop. And I called her Carly, but the, but the other young, um, her other partner, it's Marlo. It's, it's Marlo. I called her Carly. Marlo Cruz. Marlo. Yeah, I, 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 I called, put Carly. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but Marlo, Mar Marlo Cruz, she's very kind of by the book, mm -hmm. and just with that whole situation uh, with the the mentally disturbed lady, you know, she asked, was she stable to to live by herself? And McNally said, yes, she is. And McNally is, she has a good heart, and sometimes her good heart kind of gets into the way of her being a great cop, but I think she's a good cop, but not a great cop. I think she could be a great cop mm -hmm. if she would maybe go, like, not, I don't want to say by the book, but more not so much on emotion. Yeah. And that's why I think they would be great together because they both could learn from the other because Marlo needs a little bit of the emotion mm -hmm. and Andy needs a little bit more of the book. But are you, are, are you supposed to have emotion when you are a cop? I think just they train you, you mm -hmm. know, to keep that in check. But, mm -hmm. you know, something, when you're dealing with serious situations, you're bound to get emotional at points. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. I think it gets too much in the way of her work, though. Yeah, for me, I feel like her emotion gets in the way. I think you can have some emotion, mm -hmm. maybe not as much as Andy has, because yeah. she does mm -hmm. have a lot of emotion. But I think having some emotion still makes you human, because if you were to turn it all off, then, you know, you could end up being just as bad as the bad guys that you're out there trying to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought what was interesting about uh, about their relationship was it took them it took them to the later part of the day for them to finally discuss you know current the girlfriend in the room. the ex the you know the elephant in the room it took them a while and it seemed as if neither one of the neither one of them was quite disturbed about it. I mean, in the very beginning when there was a whole tension of who was going to drive, but then once they were, you know, g going over the list of who, it, it seemed like that took a backstory, and it wasn't, it didn't, seem, it didn't seem that it was important throughout the beginning of the episode until it was finally mentioned, but I didn't really feel that tension between them in the beginning. What did you guys think? I think that they put it off maybe till the end so they could, like, at least work somewhat decently, <laughs> you know, go out there. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I think they may have just like put it off and just waited till like the end of the day to like take care of it. Yeah, I, I agree because this is the first time they're technically partnering mm -hmm. up and they want to, you know, go out there and actually, you know, work. 
So I think it would have been kind of unprofessional if they already put their, perf- mm-hmm. their personal lives first mm-hmm. and dealt with that first instead of doing their jobs. And mm-hmm. then, oh, were you surprised that Cruz brought it up versus the McNally, or were you expecting McNally to bring it up at some point? I wasn't expecting McNally to bring it up, but I think that while they weren't talking about it, even in the way they were, you know, <clears throat> deciding which one to go, which suspect to go track down, it was them showing their different ways mm-hmm. and butting heads in that way. Mm-hmm. So I kind of still felt like, okay, they're still like they're circling around this tension Mm -hmm. and by kind of bringing up little things they're kind of talking about it but not directly hitting it on Mm -hmm. they're just mostly going after their police skills Mm -hmm. um, at that point but I I think I expected more of Marlo to bring it up than Mm -hmm. Andy because I don't think Andy's gonna say anything she's Mm -hmm. just gonna kind of be figuring out how she can Mm -hmm. manipulate a way in between them yeah Mm -hmm. and technically Marlo is the one with Sam not Andy so Mm -hmm. it it would kind of make sense if Marlo brought it up Mm -hmm. brought Sam up and I like she said I'm not trying to replace you (laughs) okay (laughs) she's like I know (laughs) as a woman let me get you guys this perspective if a woman if the, the next woman said to you, I'm not trying to replace you, I'm not trying to replace you, I'm not trying to replace you, how does that, how would you guys feel? I mean, I took, I, I felt that phrase was a little. I felt like it was misused. A little, yeah, yeah, I felt it was a little inappropriate to say, I'm not trying to replace you because by you saying, I don't know, it, it just, those words just felt, a little like she was trying to come for just a little bit. That's what she say to like a new stepmom. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like mm-hmm. oh, I'm not trying to replace you. Like you know, replace your mom. Yeah, replace yeah. your mom. It's yeah, it felt weird. more like that sort of situation. But mm-hmm. in this scenario, I didn't really feel like it was the proper word to use. No, I, f- I think the um, Marlo saying I'm not trying to replace you, it makes it feel like she's insecure with herself with right. her relationship with Sam. She doesn't have that confidence that she can fill in the, the void and fill in the shoes that Andy brought to the fr- uh, in the first place. So I think her s- using that particular word just shows her insecurities within herself in that relationship. Yeah, I didn't actually, I didn't actually get that. Like, why would she say something like that? I don't know, like, maybe it's just me, but it's, like, you're not, like, who who cares about, like, the ex? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You should concentrate on your relationship with... Because if, if well, they're an ex for a reason, because he didn't want someone like exactly. that. So why would you try to mimic or exactly. replace? You should be a different person because it didn't work out with someone yeah. for being one way. So you shouldn't want to be that person. No? I don't know. I don't... <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but I felt her words was the, the the wrong choice of words. But then I think McNally, the way she said, I've moved on. And then <laughs> she said, so moving on. And she's like, I've moved on. So she really hasn't moved on. You can, tell, you can totally tell she's not moved on. And I think by the way she said the first I've moved on gave Cruz in her mind thinking, mm-hmm, yeah. You still want them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think we got to move on. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah, let's move on to iTunes. So, <laughs> speaking of moving on, you guys, iTunes really helps us out here at AfterBuzz TV. What you need to do is you go down to I, uh, you go on you, you go on to iTunes, and you can download any of the after shows. We have over 60 shows uh, currently running. Uh, through our weekly schedule you want to go of course you want to download ricky blue it's a free download you can watch it you can subscribe you can uh, rate you can leave comments and you want to keep us in the top 10 in addition to that don't forget the podcast which organizes all of your different uh subscriptions that you have here on after buzz and it puts all the shows into sync and then don't forget that also you can view all of uh after buzz tv shows on apple and mobile devices well, Apple, Android, smartphones, you name, everything. You name it. <laughs> we got you covered, okay? So make sure that you go to iTunes and check us out. Yeah, and check out our new website, too. And you can find all of our past episodes mm-hmm. and past episodes of other mm-hmm. TV shows as well. Yes. Now let's go into Chloe and Epstein. 
I oh. like Chloe. She, <laughs> yeah. She's very spunky, and she really, her energetic kind of ADD kind of behavior reminds me so much of what Doug used to be in the first season. Yeah. Yes. He was very frenetic and all over the place and energetic, and, like, he was really in, in the... Uh, in the role and like trying to figure out everything he was trying to take on too much and try to impress everyone it, it really reminded me chloe reminded me of dove from first season at first i didn't like her because i'm just like <laughs> oh my gosh here comes fatal attraction and it's gonna be like this whole like other like thing going on but then she like kind of grew on me and i like her she is a little neurotic crazy but yeah <laughs> girls got spunk and like marissa was saying i was gonna say that the show has been missing something and she's that burst of energy because yeah you know we don't have epstein being that bubbly person who's all mr positive everyone's kind of in a you know they've grown up so they're not dark but just not as like fresh face like oh i want to i want to do this i want to do this and so she's bringing back a little bit of energy to the show i like their backstory because obviously they are there's some connection and and i, I don't know if they've hooked up or I think she was the one that she was the one in the stall at the end of episode Mm -hmm. two when he um, at their engagement party at at the pennies they were in the bathroom. That's right. We've been gone on a break. (laughs) I totally forgot. I totally forgot about that bathroom scene. Yeah. For for just a moment, she she, I I I wasn't really feeling her from the moment she came in and how she was really spunky and we're like, oh my god, she's a cop. And then once she went into the whole, I'm sorry, but she went into the whole typical girl thing where she. While they're at work, while they're on business, she starts to go and rehash about the things that happened last time. So I thought I wasn't going to like her, but the next scene between those two, I immediately loved her. And I knew or I predicted in my head that she would be the one who are, who's able to figure out the who done it. Mm-hmm. So I really like her. She's spunky. And some of the words that she used, what, what was one of the things called? Jelly? Oh, jelly. 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 I'm so jelly right so now. Jelly. I'm so jelly right now. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I, I like... I like it, and I like how when there are crime scenes, how she was like going in about the the furniture because she loved <laughs> antiques, and how she says that she does not take the word no for an answer, but there's something about her that I like. And she's so direct with yeah. all the people that she's yeah um, that they're questioning. Drop your pants. And yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> will be over. You know. And I think because of her, ex- I think because of her exterior, you know, you wouldn't expect it from her. Mm-hmm. So, she kind of throws you off. So I, the the guy, the the Hispanic thug with the mm-hmm. tank top, where she has to drop his pants. Like I don't think he was expecting that. So he did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think she's able to get away with a lot of things. And I think if um, if she continues on in season four, I think we're gonna see more things that she's gonna be able to get away with because of how sh- her personality is. I agree. And I liked when she was cuffing the guy at the end. Mm-hmm. You know. She's small and dainty and yeah. so spunky and everything, and then she's like being a hard ass, you know, like mm-hmm. nope, spread them, come on. And then she gives mm-hmm. she gives Dove that look, like, oh yeah, I know I'm sexy right now, I'm talking <laughs> this guy. Yeah. But but before that, she politely said, okay, I'm gonna need you to turn around and we're gonna cuff you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She reminds me of legal. Uh, she reminds me of Reese Witherspoon and legal and uh, legally, legally blonde. Yeah. Yeah. Just just her voice mm-hmm. is very. Um, Blondie-ish, very like you know, but I like very her. peppy. Yeah, very peppy. Thank you. Very peppy. Yeah, I liked at the end when they were kind of like she was kind of like asking him to like go get a drink and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and he kind of like went around and not said no, and then she's like, "You didn't say no," and <laughs> then he's like, "Well, it was implied," you know, and then she's like, "You know, come on," <laughs> it's like, "I know you like me." <laughs> <laughs> she's so bold, and it's so yeah, nice to see that, that because. On the other hand, you have Andy, who's kind of beating around the bush with, um, why can't I think of his name right now? Sam. With Sam. Sam. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's she's talking to him in the hallways and stuff. They're having their little moments, but she's not directly just saying, like, hey, yeah. this is what I want. And, yeah. you know, like, you have a chance, and here you have this chick just like, oh, well, you, you didn't tell me no. So that means that tomorrow I'm going to ask you again, and yeah. you'll say yes. She kind of reminds me of me. That's why I like her. <laughs> and Chloe also said the line that you, you were more fun when you were drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so even even that, you know, she she's very uh, energetic, and she'll tell things directly straight to your face. So you said Chloe reminds you of yourself? Yes. 
Can you give me an impression of Chloe? Can I give you <laughs> an impression spot. of Chloe? <laughs> or an impression of myself? <laughs> I just like I just love the way that she's just straightforward because I'm just that straightforward. You mm-hmm. know, I tell it how it is. Some people, you know, take it as, you know, a misconception and stuff like that. But it's well, you know. tell it like it is and tell us what you think about Diaz and Shaw. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I love Shaw. Mm-hmm. I love him, but Diaz, that poor guy, it's like poor baby, <laughs> really, like. And then he's getting a tattoo. He keeps mentioning, I have a son now, I have a son now. Yeah, and then dead. Shaw's I'm like, dead. come on, we all have kids, you know? Just stop. And, and that poor guy's going to turn around, and it's not going to be his kid. Yeah, and especially now that he has a tattoo, I was like, oh, now they're just making they it obvious yeah. it's not his kid. Because now he's going to have this kid's name tattooed yeah. on his arm and find out that it's not even his. Yeah, they're really yeah. setting that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they <Poor> really are. <laughs> but then also, I wish that we would see more with Shaw because... We're not, you know, we're, I don't feel like we're getting enough of all of these characters. I mean, this is really like an ensemble cast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I just, I'm not getting what I normally would get. You know, Shaw's character is based off of him and his reaction to DS. And I just, I want more. It's disappointing yeah, because, because, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead? <laughs> oh, I was just going to say who's on the back burner this episode. I yeah. feel like in the future he'll probably have more Shaw centric storylines, mm-hmm. but it wasn't in this episode. Shaw centric. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I like that. You were. Sasha. Um, no, I, I agree. And Shaw to me is like the fun uncle who's constantly yeah. around and like giving you guidance, mm-hmm. but in a fun way and, you mm-hmm. know, kind of loosey goosey. But. He wasn't really there this episode, and the cast has grown so much this season alone that I get that there's going to be episodes where we're not seeing anything, and maybe it's just because of, you know, the two episodes and then this big break that I feel like I haven't seen Shaw at all. Right. But it, it was nice to see him, but I, I'm with Bam. I wanted to see more of him and have a little bit more of... Even their storyline was like an F storyline this week. It was very, very small. Mm -hmm. I think we need to see a lot more of his character because I really like him. I think he's, I think it's a great character. Yeah, and last season he was going through all that stuff with his Mm -hmm. wife and separating Mm -hmm. stuff. So we, you know, we started caring so much about him and then we haven't really had anything with him much this season yet. So hopefully that changes. And we learned in the first episode of this season that like he's trying to make amends with his family right mm -hmm. now. So we know that's still kind of going on but we haven't actually touched upon it directly. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's happening with his daughter. She was like arrested and stuff. So not on good terms. Yeah. Peck and Collins, another again for me, Gail had so much going on these past couple of seasons and then we haven't really seen much for you know uh, much from her and so this week she was in the um evidence room and there was a uh urn with um with the ashes of a dead person ernie yeah ernie. and was she was she named ernie yes yeah what you i well this is kind of like going back. i just find it odd that the urn wasn't sealed and the ashes weren't in a bag is that how they come yeah oh okay. speaking mm. of someone who has two of them in their house <laughs> it's usually Do, huh you have two in your house yes okay um usually what it is is it comes in i mean maybe they did it just for like purposes of like oh look you know seeing and mm-hmm. stuff like that and like right. dumping i'm sure they did it for that but there's usually it comes in a bag and they seal the top of it so it can't like you know it can't break and it can't spill so i guess it's just because of you know what they're trying to show Mm -hmm. and stuff like that that they made it like that but i was just kind of like oh i noticed that Hmm. Uh, i thought maybe they would have engraved the urn with like whoever's you know name on it or whatnot but i this yes this storyline or wasn't the greatest but it was the comic relief of this whole episode yeah and Mm -hmm. so i I'm not against it. Mm-hmm. At least not like I didn't like it. I actually did enjoy it, and I thought it was funny. It was much needed lighter side of everything else that was going on. And her tea. Oh, was, yeah. Uh, the cleanse. Her yeah. cleanse. Yeah, her cleanse. That looked are, nasty. Yeah. yeah. It looked disgusting. You, could, you couldn't pay chunky. me to 
drink mm. that. I don't care if it's for love, how she finally convinces him to do it. Like, you know, I just want to spend my life together. And that's another thing with this storyline. We got to see a softer side of Gail, or I guess that's kind of what we've been seeing a little bit yeah. of. Yeah. It's been is, a build up, yeah. Yeah, mm. you know, she's very connected to this person who has no one and, you know, is just being left alone. And she really, really wants Collins to drink some of that <laughs> disgusting yeah. cleanse tea. <laughs> Or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, it was kind of nice to see, you know, that she isn't such a hard ass and she mm-hmm. yeah. does have a softer side. And it shows that she she doesn't want to become the person who's, you know, just a lonely pile of ashes who no one claims. You know, yeah. she mm-hmm. wants someone important in her life and that need for co- connection mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. loved ones. Yeah. So and I think that was the message of her storyline. Yeah. yeah. When you mentioned about the... the the inconsistency with the urn. Right. Something else that I thought was interesting is when McNally and Cruz were going to the car and they were deciding on who was going to drive. I'm always paying attention to detail, and their license plate does not specify what state or the city that it's in. And it's just it just drives me crazy <laughs> that there is no mention of if it's New York, if it's Canada. They shoot in Toronto. I know they shoot in Toronto, oh. but it would just it just I wish they would be very specific and mention what city it is because the yeah. license plate was yeah. was totally was uh, totally blank. But I kinda like the fact that they don't mm-hmm. actually specify that. You know, it gives an ambiguity and makes, you know, the makes viewers, you know, like, actually watching it, they don't have to focus on, oh, this actually happened on this th- this and this street. Mm-hmm. It, it allows the audience to just enjoy what's going on and not realize where they're at. Mm-hmm. Right. Going back a little bit to inconsistency, I don't understand either. I've never seen cops have so many different partners. <laughs> like, every day they have, like, a different partner. Yeah. Usually it's like one partner and you stick with that person, you know, and then you're there for them, you know, and stuff like that. But here it's like they have their partner with this one and this one and this one. And it's like, I don't, I don't understand that. They're on a sharing partnership. Yeah. Um, It is different from (laughs) typical, even other cop shows that, you know, are on TV where everyone's like, oh, this is my partner. And, you know, they go to each other's barbecues and they right. know their kids and stuff because they're a partnership right. that's been together for so long. So that is something I've been wondering, you know, why does mm-hmm. the 15th division here mm-hmm. constantly rotate? <clears throat> maybe it's for like a growth thing or because they're still kind of rookies. Or maybe because that like they are really all just one big family mm-hmm. and they have each uh, like everyone's backs mm-hmm. yeah. even though you're not my partner today i'll still have your back so mm-hmm. just everyone you know still having each other what i also like in the changes is you got to see okay so best you know at the beginning of the episode there's always the 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 meeting of the officers mm-hmm. and so now you have best you have i'm blanking out of names you have best um a unica and mm-hmm. McNally's ex-boyfriend, who are now a part of the um, like facilitating. Yeah, because okay. yeah. right. yeah. they're detectives Because they're now. detectives now. So I think that's cool to, to see the growth of character between at least those. Best uh, Luke and mm-hmm. Tracy. Yeah. Yeah, Tracy, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, best Luke and Tracy. Yeah. And we don't see much of best. We saw him in that one scene, but we didn't really see much of him. And then his uh, fiance, I guess she Noel. is. Noelle. Noelle. Is she... She came out of um, maternity, maternity leave. leave, so she's not there. I don't know. What do you guys think? Again, I think those are just storylines we'll see in the future. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll touch upon them later. Yeah. All right, well, anything else before we wrap up? Oh, can we mention the, like, the very first opening scene? Oh, the of paintball? This, the yeah. paintball. That was, yes. that was a nice way to welcome back everyone especially after this long hiatus it was just a nice way to engage the audience and have them you know showing tactics and like i got your ch- each other's back and stuff mm-hmm. even though they're having fun yeah. a- at the same time i kind of like when mcnally said like i always win yeah, yeah. yeah. have a thing which is kind of like yeah i'm gonna win you know? <laughs> and, there's always, back. and there's always friendly competition between friends especially in competitive sports yes mm-hmm. or cops that yeah. competition. Oh, you know what? What did you guys think about Cruz being so distraught over her shooting? Um, 
Um, Wanda. Uh, Wanda. Yeah, Wanda. I, I thought it was good because, you know, she's such a tough cop mm-hmm. person, but it made me question maybe was that her first sh- shooting? Mm-hmm. That's I what guess. I'm, yeah. You know, it made me kind of wonder that, or, you know, is this just her side? Like, you know, she does show her emotions mm-hmm. in this aspect because she did, at the end of the day, she did shoot someone yeah. and could have killed them. So, you know, that's going to take a toll on someone. Yeah, and I think it was the realization that she did what she had to do, and she was trying to maybe convince herself that she did everything right by textbook. And Andy kept repeating lines like, we did protocol, you got there first. And then at the end, when she was actually talking to her, she was like, you were just doing your job. Yeah. And I think that just hit her and realized she was like, well, yeah, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> it there was yeah. no emotion there. All yeah. right. All right, so um, news and gossip. Do we have news and gossip? Yeah. TV news. Yes, we do. do we have news and gossip? <laughs> um, we can talk about the next hiatus. Fourth Which, of July is yes. next week. So, so we're off again. Again. Another mm-hmm. week. But this time it's only one week. And then when we come back on July 11th, we are in through the season. Straight through. Straight through, through the, the rest of the season. So no more interruptions. Hopefully, um, fingers crossed on that, that nothing yes. traumatic happens between anything else so that we can just have all our episodes yeah nobody gets another championship yeah no like yeah no breaking news that you know has to come on (laughs) during the time you know everyone just go inside and sit on your hands so that we can watch our show oh and we need to get more viewers so we can get because this is like the big um like rookie blue itself needs to get more viewers because this is like the big like few weeks where we'll find out whether or not they get a season five. Yeah. yeah. So. But I also think that they should, uh, that ABC should also be cognizant of the fact that this is only the third episode and it's been like hit and miss mm-hmm. one week. Then t- so I hope they really take into consideration that they have not been consistent with the viewing due to circumstances that are beyond their control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I hope they're not, I don't want to call them jerks, but I, I hope that they're not, you know, Buttheads and and make a brash decision off of something that really was out of the show's control. Yeah, they yeah. have to give a chance for viewers yeah. to find the show since they've made it so hard to mm-hmm. view. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. people are like, oh, it's not back yet. It's yeah. back. And, it's like, people don't yeah. know. And Absolutely, it's, it's out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah, the inconsistency yeah. might kill them. Yeah, so, it's not good. Well, let's go into predictions. And now you're after Buzz TV. I have a prediction. All right. Mm. I want to predict that Cruz and McNally end up being friends by the end of the season. They are going to be working together, and then Sam's going to be in, like, an awkward situation because he's going to see these two getting along (laughs) and liking each other, and then that's when he's going to realize, hey, maybe I do want Andy back, Mm. and then Mm. that will cause more tension because now he's still dating Cruz, but he wants Andy, but they're friends now, so she can't do that to her, and it's going to be crazy and great. I kind of agree with that. I'm going <laughs> to come back on that because I just see them partnering up in the future, and even at when um, Andy was in the basement controlling, trying to get control the situation with Wanda, uh, Marlo said the line, she's my partner. She like So she has Andy's back, and she's going to be there, even though they might not be on the best terms with each other. I think in the end, they will ultimately like still work together pretty well. I agree with those two things. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that uh, Chloe and Epstein, I think she's going to get on Epstein's nerves, but he's going to give in to her eventually. Well, he, <laughs> oh, he kind of yeah. gave in to her at that little moment when she right. cracked the crime. Right, that's true. Mm -hmm. I think that they're going to have, like, maybe a little relationship type of thing, hopefully. Epstein likes the kind of the crazy women. Yeah, Yeah. I probably shouldn't say crazy, but (laughs) the the ones that are The colorful. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. very colorful. Mm -hmm. That's a good term. Well, that is a great prediction, but the only thing is next week or the next episode, McNally is now partnering with Peck. Mm. So, but you they ha- do have that round robin thing, so mm-hmm. it could come back to them being. No. Mm-hmm. Again. Well, the the who done it looks great, so I'm really excited to see what that's going to mm-hmm. be about. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited to see them, uh, McNally and Peck kind of like be partners. Mm-hmm. Maybe Peck will be like, well, you know, what happened between you and Nick? 
because yeah. we all know how much I love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peter Mooney. Mm-hmm. Six four six seven no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. We'll we'll see more of that backstory when they were um, undercover together. Maybe we'll get a little bit yeah. more drama and yeah. something from Gail this time. Yes. Yeah. And we will. And we are going to uh, get back with you in two weeks when we return for Wiki Blue season four. And so let everyone know where you guys can be found on social media. I'm Anique Dufour, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Just Anique and my website, AniqueDufour.com. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at TweetT22. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serifini TV. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Bam Erickson. We want to thank you guys for watching another Bingus for Doing at, uh, After Buzz TV recap for Rookie Blues season, uh, season four. We'll see you guys in two weeks. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.